Welcome to this BEC podcast. My name is Rasmus Beck, and today I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Center of Excellence coach, Kestudis Navishkas. Welcome. Hello, thanks for having me here. Yes, of course, Kestudis. Kestudis, uh, you are employed by Badminton Europe as one of the coaches at our Center of Excellence. Can you try to maybe explain a bit on what are you actually doing with the players at Center of Excellence? What we are doing, we are developing them. Uh, we are we are just educating them. Uh, we are doing a lot of things actually. Uh, in the beginning, it was more guiding as being a professional athlete. As uh, what do you eat? What is, uh, how do you prepare for the practice, for the tournaments and stuff like that? We have done uh, uh, like two years now, so now mm. it's a little bit easier in this area because the new people who are coming, uh, they they adjust uh, to our rules, to our like discipline, and uh, then f- for the coaches it's a little bit easier. But so now we can focus much more on badminton, on the results, on the details, and uh, and development of mm. the players. Lately, we have seen uh, Center of Excellence players been doing quite good, uh, especially in, in the men's singles category. Are you surprised that we already see results, uh, for instance, on, on future series level from uh, an even higher level as well uh, for, for the players? I'm not surprised. I'm very happy, but I'm not surprised. Uh, this Monday, I came to the hall and uh, we always just have a little chat before the week starts, before every practice. And I said, okay, I'm getting used to that when I'm coming on Monday and someone has won the tournament or played like something really good. Uh, so uh, I'm happy. I'm not surprised because uh, probably, as you know, the big results, they're not coming in uh, at that moment when you win. The big results is building up from the previous uh, years, from the previous practices and uh, all the efforts that everyone is uh, giving. So uh, I uh, expect that, but I'm still very, very happy because the last weeks were probably one of the most uh, successful weeks of the center of excellence with some of the best results. Like Jonathan Dolan winning two future series and Felix Burstead winning, uh, going into semifinals into Dutch Open. So some good things are happening at mm. the moment. Mm. This is recording uh, during the Denmark Open in, in October. Uh, if we look one year back and compare the players we had at Center of Excellence at that point mm. and till now, and even also if we actually go two years back, we have seen a lot of players coming and going. How, uh, how does that affect the training environment? Uh, for our permanent players, that affects like really well because we are very uh, structured. I think uh, the new players, they are getting up to speed very quickly (coughs) just because we have a discipline, we have a structure and they just follow. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, obviously uh, the center is booming at the moment. We get the requests almost like every day from uh, better and better players and uh, we are very happy about that. But at the same time, we always want to see that in a bigger picture. Uh, and uh, for for our permanent players, I think it's uh, really, really good. The uh, changing of partners, changing of players, mm. uh, it's really good. The center opened on the 1st of September 2017. Right. Uh, at that point, it was a European training center. Uh, if you follow uh, Badminton Europe on social media, you can see that we have players coming in from basically everywhere. Uh, Soraya, for instance, from, from mm. Iran. We have players from Pan Am, we have players from Asia. Um, what does that tell you that it's not only the Europeans anymore, but it's also like, it's actually a world training center? Yeah, that tells me that the center of excellence, obviously, are doing something good because people, uh, they, they want to come uh, here to us. Uh, like obviously they have a good experience they go and tell to their uh, friends and then the friends they contact us and they want to come so uh, so it's uh, uh, been like that 
the, the build up, uh, the hard work that we've been doing for two years now is really paying off. Mm. And now from all over the world, we hear a good feedback. And, uh, and uh, for us, for the <coughs> Europeans, it's really good that the different continents are coming because mm. uh, uh, we get used to uh, different styles. Mm. We, uh, we get used to uh, different personalities. They make friends. We look at it also. It's also very good from the social point of view because uh, players, they see a different cultures. They get mm. to learn a different culture. So I think at the same time, they're growing as a personality. Mm. Is that important? Or why is that important, actually? It depends on their philosophy. In mm. my philosophy, uh, uh, you cannot be a good player without the overall personality. So for me, uh, it's a huge part of the player development is educating them and guiding them also from the personal side of it. Mm. Uh, because especially that they are young, they uh, have a lot of attractions, uh, mm. and they have uh, a lot of temptations. So if you take as a professional athlete, all those temptations at some point, uh, uh, you get lost. Mm. So uh, we are there to guide them to stay focused, uh, but same time to develop and guide them as a better person. Mm. Uh, I said the players has come. We are also seeing that players have been leaving in the center yes. of excellence. Um, how does it feel as a coach to see players leaving, not only because of injuries, but maybe also lack of funding? Uh, maybe the level is not high enough. Uh, how is it also to, to see, okay, um, this guy or girl is leaving. It's tough. Uh, same time, uh, as a coach, as a the high performance center, we have to understand that high performance is not for everyone. Mm. High performance is a tough way of life. So uh, you need to have a lot of different qualities as a person to stay there in the high mm. yeah, like high performance so same time <coughs> for me as a coach it's uh it's always uh okay we uh, like one of the players won that tournament and one of the player uh players played very good here but then i get the message that the player got injured at the same tournament or mm. a different tournament and then I have uh, mixed feelings. Mm. So, uh, so as a coach, you you always have uh, mixed feelings. You cannot be like only happy because when you have so many players, you have to uh, you have to know the overall picture. Mm. But uh, I try to hide it as best as possible because uh, as a coach, I have to lead the group. Uh, we we have to be the leaders. We have to give them. Uh, the positive emotions uh, and but uh, and so then you have to hide a little bit but with every player you have a uh, stronger or, or or less stronger uh, connection mm -hmm. so there were definitely the players who've been trying very very hard but they were just unlucky in mm -hmm. some of the cases and they had to leave mm -hmm. that's how it is that's mm -hmm. high performance uh, it's not for everyone even though some people are trying very, very hard sometimes, it's not for everyone. Mm. When I look at the players coming into the center, uh, I see some, not that many, on permanent contracts, uh, meaning that there's no end date uh, for the stay. But I see a lot of players coming for two weeks, maybe up to four weeks, some half a year. How is it as a coach to see, I have this player, he's here only for two weeks, and I have this girl, she's here for permanent stay. H how is it to work with that? Yeah, I think uh, that's where the coaching team is very structured. In this case, we have a very clear, uh, clear structure. We, uh, we divide the players mm -hmm. we, uh, between the coaches. So uh, if the player comes for two weeks, uh, we make sure that he gets enough uh, attention from one of us. Mm. just to make the best possible experience for mm. that player. Mm. Uh, and, and regarding the coaching team, uh, you're not alone. Uh, Jeroen van Dijk, he's the head coach. Yeah. Uh, Peter Jensen, also coach. And the newest member of the team, Judith Mollendijk, former yeah. top player. Uh, that's fair to say, I think. Um, how is it also now to have a female colleague? 
uh, we have started with a female mm. colleague with uh, Nicola, <coughs> uh, like in the first beginning. And uh, uh, Judy definitely has a very good qualities as a coach, but also as a person. Mm. And I see she has connected with the center very well straight away. She has connected with the coaching team and she definitely gives um, good qualities to the whole coaching mm. uh, uh, group. Uh, Jeroen van Dijk is doing a great job like managing the center and managing and structuring all the coaching team. So uh, I feel uh, really comfortable in the coaching uh, team. At the same time, I have a lot of responsibilities, but I, I feel that all of us coaches uh, have uh, used the best qualities that we have in the best possible and the most efficient way. Mm. That's where I think the mm. team is working mm. uh, the most efficient. We see, of course, the day-to-day -day practice at Center of Excellence, but you also have camps. Uh, the first big camp was the women's singles camp. Yes. Uh, recently, there was also a men's singles camp. What are the ideas uh, regarding these camps and what, what, what's actually the benefit for, for the players who attend these camps? Because that's not for everybody as well. Idea is uh, very simple, basically, to uh, help uh, uh, badminton in Europe to develop and get better. We know that a lot of federations, they have <coughs> one good player, two good players, and uh, it's not easy to practice then at home. Mm. So the idea is to help them to come together, to give a good sparring, uh, and uh, yeah, basically to help them uh, develop. Uh, the camps in our mind has been very successful. We have also the future plans to do more of those camps because the feedback is very positive. And, uh, and 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 uh, uh, yeah, the feedback is that the players are very happy to play with uh, different partners, uh, with the uh, train with the different coaches, uh, get a different ideas. Mm, but but it's it's only one week more or less. Right. Um, <clears throat> how can you see that the level is actually increasing because it's only uh, up to fourteen sessions if you tr practice twice a day, and and for sure they don't because. They also have travels to do and such. Right. Uh, we don't say that to, we make them crazy better, but we just help them mm. to get that uh, that intensity. Uh, but uh, also, uh, it's not really uh, the sessions. Maybe they get a different mm. ideas. Maybe they hear something new, mm. which they can bring back home and continue working on those mm. things that they found out in the center during the camp, for example. Yeah. Yeah, we have an experienced coaches. We also ask coaches to come from outside. So the really good coaches are coming to coach. And uh, I think that the, the, the feedback that we get that uh, players are going back home with a new, with a new ideas and or at different angles. So if you get to know one thing for your game, that's already an achievement in my mind. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, Kisturis, you played yourself, still. Uh, now that's in the past. How is it now, two years later, actually, to say, okay, now I'm a, now I'm a coach. I'm not a player slash coach. Now I'm a full-time coach, so that's my focus. Yeah, the first uh, year, probably, it was uh, difficult to fully uh, talk about myself as mm. a coach. Mm. Uh, uh, but I feel uh, extremely lucky that I uh, can develop now as a coach in this kind of organization where we have so many players, so different personalities. So uh, you can use your knowledge in the best possible way and you can also learn from a different players. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I, uh, I, uh, I'm happy what I achieved in my badminton career. I uh, felt I, uh, um, uh, I have achieved, uh, you can always achieve more, but I achieved what I achieved and I'm very happy about that. I'm mm -hmm. very happy about the road that I had and uh, the journey that I had in my mm -hmm. career. And I'm at the same time very motivated and very happy to move forward to transfer this into coaching. As mm -hmm. more I coach, as uh, more detailed I go, as more I want to learn, mm -hmm. as more I want to learn about the game, about the players, about the personalities. And I like now I like the coaching like even more than I was a player because there are 
so many more areas, so mm -hmm. many more psychological areas, uh, tactical areas, uh, uh, management, uh, co communication, and you have to make all this work. Mm -hmm. And I'm very motivated and uh, keen to learn and move forward mm -hmm. now as a coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, born and raised in Lithuania, Kastoris, uh, you are you've been coached in many different ways because you've also been living in different countries in Europe uh, right. throughout your full career. As a coach now, how, how do you try to think about if you are coaching in a too tough or too soft way, or or how is it going? Is it going to be coaching like in the the more tough way, which I assume could be more the eastern part? Uh, being mm -hmm. inspired by that or the softer part being like the the, the western part of europe and uh, what are what are your thoughts about that area if one thing i can say what i'm not doing i'm not uh, coaching too soft <laughs> that's <laughs> i think for sure that's a feedback from the players that would mm -hmm. be a good question for the players actually mm -hmm. uh, so i uh, the feedback that i are get you too is, tough? Uh, I don't know what is too tough, what is mm. not too tough. Mm. If you uh, uh, want to be, like I said previously, in a high performance, you have to be very tough. Mm. So um, uh, my uh, my way of coaching, I want to push the limits of mm. every player. Mm. I want to push the limits. I want to uh, inspire them to believe that they can raise the bar. Mm. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Mm. Uh, I want... Uh, in every practice to uh, raise the limits i want to uh, in every practice to have a purpose of that practice and for the players to like understand why we are doing this or that for me that's important mm. and uh and uh yeah that's also uh you could ask those my players and then they would uh, give a better answer maybe in that area i'm not i'm not necessarily sure they would um one of the players uh, that you are working with is uh, Felix Borstedt from Sweden. Right. Uh, the last two years we have seen, uh, among others, Felix doing very well. Uh, he is also in the race for qualifying for, for Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, Felix is a permanent player at Center of Excellence, living there, uh, practicing every day. Uh, you're coaching him, you're working with him. But if he qualifies for Tokyo, Mm. It's not necessarily you going because he's going with the Swedish national team. Right. How would it be for you knowing that you're working every... It could be Milan Ludic as well, for instance, or whoever actually qualifies because it's the same situation. Now I'm just mentioning Felix because I know you work close with Felix. Yeah. Um, how would it be for you to sit back in Denmark watching it on television knowing that I work with this guy every day. I am... One of the guys who has helped him to qualify, but it's the Swedish guy behind him. Or I actually think they have an English coach in, 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 in Sweden at the moment. It's the guy actually coaching him at the Olympics, which is the biggest for the player. Also a big thing for a coach. How would that going to be? Uh, tough. Hmm? <laughs> First of all, uh, if we talk about <laughs> Felix a little bit, he... Hmm? Uh, he uh, He's made a long way now. So, uh, it's been like two years that he's in the center of excellence. He made such a long way as a personality and as a player mm. as well. I think that's one of the nicest things also as a coach uh, to uh, have a player like that, mm. where you see that when he started and now that's two years period, but uh, the, the, the change is uh, very... Uh, very dramatic, I would mm. say, in mm. many different areas. Yeah, in a positive way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so that's a good story. That's also a pleasure to work with the players like that. Mm. Uh, in a, in general, like as a coach, what I've learned now, you sometimes you you have to step back a little bit, mm. and uh, uh, the play the player knows, and the player appreciates and uh, people who need to know they know uh, how was his mm. uh, or her development mm. and i trust in that i mm. trust in that of course i would like to go like all the way with felix but uh, that's a situation i know mm. what i've done felix knows uh, or so or some other player they know mm. how they were communicating mm. with the coach and uh, for me that's the most uh, 
important that the players know how mm. dedicated the coach is, uh, how uh, much the coach helped mm. for the players' development. And mm. this is what is uh, driving me forward. Mm. And I'm not thinking much about what you just said. I can picture the, this mm. kind of situation. Mm. But for me, that's the most uh, important, his, his development mm. or, or some other players' development that's what i value the most mm. and uh, of course i would like to be uh, like all the way with the players to go like all the way mm. but uh, that's a situation and i uh, have to step back mm. and trust the process mm. but are you going to be proud when you see a coe player playing the olympics or are you going to be sad for not being there in olympics mm. uh, if uh, hopefully uh, not uh, like not only Felix, but more mm. players are qualifying. Mm. I think that's the best message from the center of excellence. Mm. I would be super proud about mm. it. Uh, I'm very proud in general uh, f about the players who are coming to the center because they sacrifice lives. They sacrifice, mm. n they don't sacrifice lives because that's uh, mm. an amazing experience but they uh, sacrifice their friends their families they uh, go totally out of the comfort zone mm. and the effort that you see there every day like in the center of excellence from the players this gives you a uh, good motivation mm. good energy and personally i'm coming to the uh, to the hall like every day like, happy and uh, motivated to bring those players mm. higher mm. yes and higher and Let's see where Felix uh, Felix is still going up. I still feel he has so many areas to uh, uh, improve. Mm. We are talking about it with him and uh, I feel we have a good understanding that there is still a lot of a lot of areas mm. to improve even <coughs> though the curve is uh, very impressive for mm. Felix. Mm. If we look at the permanent players at Center of Excellence, we have seen them winning a future series. Correct me if I'm wrong in these because I think I, I think I have it, but I'm correct me if I'm wrong. We we've seen them winning future series, international series, and also challenge. Um, we still need to see them winning a world series, mm. either with world tour tournament. I'm not going to ask you if it's going to happen because I know you're going to say yes. I'm more like when is it actually going to happen that we will see a permanent player of center of excellence winning a BWF world tour tournament. To be honest, the result of last week shows that it's getting it's getting closer mm. and closer. When Felix went uh, where was winning round after round, uh, I saw this coming. Mm. I saw this coming. Uh, it didn't happen like this time, but uh, and uh, that's why we need still to develop. Mm. Uh, but uh, I totally see that coming. And I think we are like on the right track. Mm. When it's coming, uh, you can never say when it's coming. Mm. Uh, we have a vision, we have the the goals, and we are approaching the goals. Mm. So the next goal, uh, the last week showed that our last goal is just around the corner, and then we continue uh, striving to achieve uh, mm. this goal. Mm. My last question for you, Kistur, is everything is about the Olympics right now. For you, it's also developing young players to become a better player. Right. How many permanent players from Center of Excellence will we see in Tokyo in 2020? <laughs> permanent players. Let's see who, uh, if someone will join as a permanent player mm -hmm. from now on. Mm -hmm. uh, but as of October uh, 20, 2019. Yeah. Which of these players will make it? It's it's close now, but uh, uh, it's so dynamic now in the center of excellence. You know that someone leaves, someone goes. Mm. So now it's really hard to uh, identify who is really a permanent mm. player and mm. who is not a permanent player. Mm. Uh, from the permanent players, I hope uh, two mm. the best uh, or uh, the wish would be three. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but it's a tough competition there. Mm. Uh, we are trying very hard, and I truly believe that two should be the minimum, mm. and three would be great.
let's hope for free players in Tokyo. Kestuji, thank you very much for coming and thank you again for, thank you for doing me. a good work for sure at the Center of Excellence. And uh, let's keep in touch. We'll for sure talk more about Center of Excellence in the future. Thank and you. thank you very much for watching this podcast from Badminton Europe. Follow us on all our platforms and we will for sure bring podcasts and other content to you very soon. Thank you very much for joining.